mode. Um, essentially, we all know what it means. When we used to play video games when we were little kids, it used to, uh, there used to be a little cheat code that made you transcend from the rules of the game. Now, I don't follow the rules of the game or the rules of life. I'm a man who lives life completely on his own terms. So I can think of nobody better as my first guest on the God Mode podcast than this man right here. Now, if you know me from Twitter, you probably know who the man sitting uh, next to me on, on my screen at least is. But if you are from Romania, Eastern Europe, Slovakia, maybe a few of the guys in the UK and you don't know who this guy is, he lives his own version of God Mode over in Canada. Um, he certainly is not following the rules of the game. Most 46 year olds aren't built like him. They don't drive cars like him. They don't live life like him. So I'm going to hand this over uh, to Mr. Rich Cooper, who has kindly joined me today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Rich. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, Tristan. I appreciate it. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Um, well, what can we start with? So name's Rich Cooper, started a YouTube channel about five or six years ago, uh, really just to interview my friends in their success rides and um, pivoted to kind of deal with some wounds that I needed to make my work and just started talking about a lot of red pill concepts, you know, understanding women better and how guys can get better results out of life um, by applying some basic skills, which a lot of guys still struggle with, especially the uh, the white knight type fellows. But um was an entrepreneur long before I got anywhere near any of this content or even thought about it. Had a number of successful business, a couple that flopped, but uh, yeah, that's the too long, didn't read sort of version of my life. Yeah, and when I mean, you're talking about your uh, sort of core values as such, which you like to preach uh, on your YouTube channel, uh, people can find you at rich underscore Cooper on Twitter, uh, by the way, if you didn't know that already. Um, social status, fitness, uh, was this something that you were conscious about and interested your entire life or is it some an epiphany that kind of hit you later on i was not aware of any of these specific details that you get when you kind of start consuming like starting with rollo tomasi's work mm -hmm. you know for example um i was always, always always naturally alpha right like big guy strong always muscular rode motorcycles drove fast cars didn't really have a hard time with women even when i was losing my hair and you know had to start wearing glasses for shade vision and stuff like that but um Play, like like playing life at a higher level is always going to be accomplished and achieved when you see things as they as they truthfully are. I don't really like the whole red pill stuff and the manosphere. I think it's a silly kind of word. Like the manosphere to me sounds like a gay nightclub. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, like I look at it more along the lines of, do you like comforting lies or do you prefer the uncomfortable truth about the way the world works and the way that you can operate to get better results to make yourself, you know, put yourself first? And for me, it's always a ladder. It's, you know, what, what's the uncomfortable truth about the world that we live in? Let's deal with that. Okay. And, and you started your YouTube channel and your, your teaching, let's say, uh, five or six years ago. Was there a specific event in your life that led you up to thinking, you know, I need to tell more people about this? Uh, is there something you discovered perhaps? Well, it was two things. I mean, I kind of had a run up to it because um, about 2011, two, two really shitty things went down in my life. One, I was going through my uh, divorce, which was, a, which was just something that I never thought would look like the way that it did. Um, I, I blissfully walked into a slaughterhouse, basically, uh -huh. not knowing what I was yeah. walking into. So that was a eye awakening moment. The other thing, too, was I had some stuff going down in my business where competitors and very large financial institutions with pockets deeper than God um, could potentially change the legislation in the landscape, which would put our business out of um, operation. So I was super busy with that, dealing with lobbyists. I spent a ton of time and money dealing with all those things, trying to, trying to solve those problems and then exiting the divorce machine. But the thing that really kind of red-pilled me, like this is the thing that really pushed me over the edge. I was stupid enough after my divorce, once I got clear of it, to get involved with the single mommy for a few years. She had two boys. Yeah. And that was the thing that red pilled me. Like that was the point where a friend of mine was like, dude, you need to read this book. And he's like, read rational mail. I downloaded the audio book, listened to it on my flight back from this men's retreat. And then that's kind of what pushed me into, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here that I kind of knew and I saw happening, but I didn't want to believe because I watched way too many Disney movies or I spent too much time watching cable television growing up. And my dad was pretty much a, a, a beta. Like he was a, he was a big, strong guy, but he was always bending the knee to my mom sort of thing. Right. So all of this programming, I really had to unplug from and kind of, you know, subscribe to some new beliefs that would get me better results. Yeah. I mean, divorce, it, it's, Guys like you, listening to guys like you, um, and every older man I know who's been an influence in my life, uh, some of my mother's brothers, my uncles, have warned me about marriage, and they've uh, warned me 
um, about divorce. Essentially, what they say is no matter how sweet a woman is, no matter how much she loves you, when it comes time to get divorced, the love is gone. So she's ruthless. Um, now you well, they always say that the woman you marry is never the same woman that you divorce. She, she completely pivots when she has access to family law and realizes how beneficial that is for her to leverage it so she can get access to the kids, control decision-making processes, and get more money from the father. Absolutely. And, and you got divorced in Canada. Is that correct? Yeah, you do not want to get divorced in Canada, okay, trust no, me. Because that's a question I have for you. A lot of my listeners are, for, are from Eastern Europe. I think things are a bit more forgiving here. And if I do go down yeah. the marriage route, it's going to be the church only, no state legislation uh, marriage route. I'm certainly not going to be signing that piece of paper. Uh, but what, what are the main differences between the United States and Canada? Um, is it, is it they're, worse, better? They're pretty similar throughout most of the West. So. I mean, I've I've talked to thousands of guys now on my uh, coaching sessions because I do a lot of one on one. So when I'm doing videos, guys have the opportunity to book me for consults. You know, if they want to deal with trying to figure out how to untie the knot. So I've talked to guys all throughout most of Western Europe, so England, France, Germany, mm -hmm. all throughout North America. Even even guys that are expats that are dealing with women that they brought back to North America from places like Asia or you know other places in the world. But um, it's incredibly hostile towards fathers, generally speaking. In North America. There's places in the States where it's a little more friendly. Like there's some States like Nevada and Florida, you know, for example, which are a lot, well, I'm not going to say a lot more friendlier, but they're a little more balanced towards mm -hmm. fathers. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, everything within family law is designed to um, give, give the mother as much control and as much resources as, as possible. And that's going to come at somebody's expense, which is always going to be the father. So what most guys usually end up seeing happening is she takes the kids she gets a new boyfriend. He spends more time with his own kids than he's allowed to while he ends up sending her money every month and he watches her alienate him from his own children. Um, mm. So it's, I mean, it's a pretty shitty deal because I mean, the whole point to having children is siring children to pass on your name, to pass on your DNA is so you have some influence and you have some ability to raise them and, you know, be a part of their lives, obviously. But family law doesn't really allow men in the West to do that today. It's, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, there's certain things you can do to get around it or to minimize the risk, but the risk is always there. Like they say, not all women will destroy men in divorce court, but all women can. Yeah, exactly. They always have the power to do so. And, uh, you know, power corrupts, as they say, um, a lot of people yeah. actually ask me, Richard, why I live in Eastern Europe. I'll tell you about a, a law that you'll like, uh, in Slovakia. So I have a friend from Slovakia, lived in England with his Slovak wife, got divorced, decided to move back to his country. When they first joined the European Union, a lot of women were taking these men's children and moving to the West, moving to Germany, moving to England to work jobs. And these men were stuck without their kids. So Slovakia actually passed a law in the early 2000s preventing the child living outside of the country of the person who finances the child. Good. So the father's paying Good. child support. So when he moved back to Slovakia, she wanted to stay in England. The child had to move legally with him. So there, there is hope for the world, but I think it's in the East. Yeah. 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 They're still friendly places. I mean, uh, Kenya apparently is friendly to fathers, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, yeah. 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 There was a tweet that I put out today. Apparently they'll uh, split custody and there's nothing the mother can do to fight anything around that. It's just straight down the middle. 50, 50. Yeah. I don't know. And why do you think that is in the, in the West more so than the East? What, when did this, well, happen? men aren't valued like men throughout history have never been valued. Men have always been a disposable commodity, right? I mean, if you go back 10,000 years, if warring tribes were in, in conflict and there was a conquering tribe that would you know, come in, the first thing they would do is they would fight off and kill all the men. And any men that, that didn't die in the conflict would either be tried to be put into slavery. And if they refuse to be slaves, then they just kill them. Yeah. Uh, boys of fighting age were either recruited to be new soldiers in their army, or they were killed or put into slavery. And the women were kept as war brides. So they were used for copulation, for reproduction, you know, for childbearing and all that sort of stuff. So women have always been preserved throughout history. Like they've always been the protective sex. Men, on the other hand, are just always disposable. It's just, it's just what we are. And that's okay. I mean, you just have to accept that that's how the world views it and then act accordingly. Yeah. And um, you mentioned a book that that really helped you out. Um, a lot of the guys watching it will be Eastern European, but there is a book, The Rational Male by Rollo Tomasi. I've actually listened to it on audiobook. Um, I have personal close friends of mine who've said that book literally saved their lives uh, and saved them from their, their boring sexless marriages. So so highly recommended. Um, I'm so going to I'm going to pitch my book because I just published this on Amazon, The Unplugged yeah. Alpha. Yeah. If you want a distilled version of everything in the red pill space, 200 pages, you'll get through it in one day. It's on Amazon right now. Yep, check it out, guys. It's on Audible yet. See, I'm an audio book. Not yet. I am going to record it myself. So you're going to okay. hear it in my voice. Wonderful. Now I'm going to tell you oh, your voice. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you why I'm an audio book guy. And you're going to like this. And it leads to my next question, which I'm going to ask you. 
I don't have time to sit down with a paper book anymore. As much as I used to enjoy it, I'm too busy with work. I'm too busy trying to make money. I'm too busy meeting my women, but I do love driving. Driving, I think, is a passion that me and you both share. Uh, we both love yeah. our, our, our fast cars. Now, I listen to audiobooks when I drive. I'll be driving through the mountain roads listening to Ian Fleming or, uh, you know, or, or I don't I'm know. the same way. History. Yeah, exactly. I really yeah. enjoy it. So I, I, I very I rarely to... read books unless they're only available in paperback. But even yeah. then, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait for the reading, right? And I'll always listen to it. Exactly. When it, when it Driving is a great way to get through books. I'm exactly the same, dude. Yeah, you know, if I have yeah. a long road trip, I'm listening to a book always. Good. So I, I will, I will uh, definitely get that when it comes out on audiobook. Supercars. Now, I want to play a little game with you, Rich, because you have an Audi R8 convertible, I believe. Absolutely fantastic car. It's a beast of a machine. Um, it was actually mine and my brother's dream car uh, when I was younger. We, want, we wanted one more than anything. Uh, I'm, it's a little, I, I'm, the reason I don't have one now is I'm almost six foot five. Uh, it's a little bit, I mean, it's, I don't even drive my Lamborghini or my McLaren for the exact same reason. I was going to say, how do you fit in the Huracan, especially um, the convertible? Because, because the headroom is like, I'm six yeah. foot two and change and it's really tight with me. Like I can barely fit in it. Yeah. I, I put the roof down. Essentially. I put the roof down. Okay. And I've also, I've also had the manufacturers lower and uh, reverse the seat further than it was supposed to go. They've taken some things out. So my driver's seat is, is, is wider than the other one. But I've got another, I've got the Huracan Evo coming soon, and that is slightly bigger and slightly more forgiving. So supercars are one of those things where everybody wants them. Every young man wants them, certainly. And when you get one, people love to come at you with bullshit reasons of why nobody should have one, why you shouldn't mm -hmm. want one, why having one makes you a loser. So you probably have a passion. Yeah. You probably rented it, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So you have a passion for supercars. I have a passion for supercars. So we're going to play devil's advocate right now. I'm going to hit you with the same sort of accusations that I get hit with every single day. And I want to know your response. So it's a game we're going to play. Okay. All right, Rich, go. you only bought a supercar to get women. Women only like you because you have a supercar. So? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, when it comes to hate, oh. the way that I look at haters is 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 – hate only ever comes from beneath you nobody ever gets jealous of a loser yeah. okay uh i mean i'm never getting messages like that from billionaires like elon musk exactly. or jeff bezos yeah. or you guys yeah. you know for example it's yeah. it's always some guy that has a bus pass <laughs> and wants to have a supercar but can't afford it so they just point and sputter at you like a woman right yeah that, 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 i mean that is the best response people say, oh women only like you because I just of, go, so yeah yeah so because you have a supercar well i do have a supercar so um yeah. all right another one the whole uh you know Everyone talks about getting rich. Everyone talks about making money. I actually preach. I love preaching, spending money, because that's what money is for. That's why I make it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, your car depreciates, Richard. You shouldn't have bought that. You should have invested in X, Y, and Z stock and blah, blah, blah. What's your answer? Yeah, I've already got investments. This is this is throwaway <laughs> money, right? I don't care if it depreciates. Yeah, exactly. You buy the supercar right. when you already have other things. You don't yeah, save like, up. Like <laughs> Like when the average Joe that works the nine to five job and, you know, going to his wife with a three, you know, going to his job and he's got a 300 pound wife and a 3.1 kids and he's miserable with everything, making yeah. $60,000 a year and he's driving his Toyota Tercel or whatever it is that he's rolling in. To him, he's, he's buying it after he's paid for his housing. He's got his RRSPs or his retirement savings plan or whatever you want to call it. Like he's got that out of the way and then he buys the car that he can afford. So, I mean, whether you're buying an R8 or a Bugatti Chiron, you're buying it because you can afford to pay for it, not because you're a Muppet and, you know, you're leveraging everything you have just to show up in a nice car. People that have people that have nice cars, this is what a lot of people that don't know about supercar owners and supercar clubs. And you already know this because you already participate in rallies and stuff like this. But these are some of the coolest fucking people in the world. Absolutely. Um, buying a nicer car gives you access, gives you the privilege to hang out with other guys that have cool shit too. So you guys all get together and you hang out and you have events and it's like, you know, you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, right? So Precisely. when you surround yourself with excellence, you can't help but become better yourself, right? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly the same principle. Uh, when I was young, I used to hear about people who spent a lot of money in nightclubs and I think 10,000 pounds in a night. If I had 10,000 pounds, I'd buy a new car and I'd buy a new bed and I'd rent a better apartment. But the guys who were doing it, the guys who were spending that money, already have all of those things. It is throwaway yeah. money, like you said. So yeah, that is the, that, those are some, exactly the same answers as I'd give. Uh, but I like to hear them from someone else because uh, I'm tired of preaching them to, to my audience again and again and again. Um, so supercars. And now you get a lot of flack for your car, for the things that you post. I mean, you posted something today with some woman calling you. What was it? The, the final boss of all mansplainers. Was, was that it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's So what... 
what is what'll typically for? happen is yeah so what'll typically happen so i posted this on the on the community tab of my youtube channel if um i'm just trying to think what the lyrics were but it was something along the lines of if a woman says you know we're just friends say fine grab her phone and then text the guy i'm horny let's bang yeah. she's either going to freak out when you start doing it mm -hmm. or the guy and you won't get through the process or the guy's going to get the messages and he's going to be all over it like a fat kid on cake. Absolutely. And then it just, you know, concludes with men and women can't be just friends. Right. I agree. So what ends up happening is of course, all of the crazies find that. And then the Twitter mob comes in and then they find it and they pop, post it somewhere on social media, like Facebook and some private Karen group. And they all get together and they swarm in and they start shitting on it. And then they watch your videos and they start shitting in the comments over there. And this entire like snowball starts happening, which is fine because I end up getting like an extra 20,000 views an hour on the videos, yeah. which helps me out at the end of the day. It's like, you know, all these haters spend all this time watching my stuff. I don't care if you disagree, fine, watch it. I mean, you're helping me out with the algorithms. Yeah, I mean- But that's that, where that came from. Yeah, and, and that's an experiment I've actually pulled myself, Rich, I promise. I've pulled it myself. Girls, oh, he's like a brother to me. I'm like, I bet he's not. Let me send him one message. And uh, a, few yeah. times they, a few times they've called me, called my bluff and their friendship with that man was essentially ruined after he texts back, oh, I'm so glad you left that idiot, Tristan. He was so mean to you. I'll treat you right. And um, yeah, it, it is it is very funny, Richard. The, in fact, the only thing I have, and the only thing any man can have remotely close to a female friend are girlfriends of my brother, girlfriends of my cousin. I wouldn't ever hang right. out with them, but I can say hi to yeah. them, speak with them, and have a conversation in a completely platonic way because you're loyal to your friends. Uh, that, but that's right. that's it. That's where right. the line exists. Work buddies. Yeah, aside from colleagues. that, what... Like, what do you have in common with women, right? Like, do they know how it, you know, like the size of the engine and your Huracan Evo that's coming down the road and how much power it has and why you're buying it? And, you know, does she know about the four wheel steering system and all that stuff? No, she doesn't. She no. doesn't know about any of those things. It's just she's going to look pretty in the passenger seat with her outfit and her handbag and her makeup on. And she'll be able to post a picture on social media proving that she's hot. And she's got a hot boyfriend. Yep, exactly. That's what yeah. her benefit to it is all. Yeah, I think the mistake, uh, I've, got, I've got a theory I want to run by you. I think a lot of men get very attached to women because they're in search of companionship. And I think men who yeah. have, for example, like me and my brother have, we're, we're best friends, we live together, we're always together. I don't need companionship. So I've always found myself to, to look at women with a smarter eye than a lot of men. Um, have you found that? I, I mean, did you find that? I mean, who, who are your guys? Did they, they keep you away from falling? Yeah, we're not that ears? different. I've got, I've got two younger brothers. So oh, like you, I'm... I'm real tight with my brothers. I mean, one's one's five years younger, the other one's eight years younger. Um, and we get on well. We've lived together before. I I at at your age, I was actually probably still living with my brothers. I think at the time because I had a house and they were with me. Yeah. But to me, like that's like that's friendship. Like that's a brotherhood. You know, bro blood is thicker than water. They're, like women don't offer anything um, friendship wise that I'm looking for. I don't have deep conversations with women about shit that matters to me. I like women. I have good conversations with women when I talk to them, but I don't ever consider a woman like my best friend, right? Like I had this conversation the other day and um, I don't know, this chick got dumped by this guy and I said, well, what happened? Like, why did he dump her? And the answer was, well, he was looking for a best friend in the relationship too. And I was like, whoa, this guy's watched way too many fucking Disney movies. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, but that's... But that's what a lot of guys think, you know, it's, you know, men and women should be best friends, like your wife, your girlfriend, your partner, whatever should be your best friend. But it's not true. Yeah, no, I completely disagree. And, uh, and I completely agree with you. I mean, I disagree with the with the notion. And women have tried that. They've tried to come in between me and Andrew. I mean, good luck. But they say stupid things like, oh, you're in your 30s and you're both still living in the same house. And you just want to hang out. Yeah, they try to shake you. Don't you think that's yeah. weird? I said, no, no, it's not weird. You don't talk to your sister. But don't you think that's weird? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't have a good relationship with your father. Like, who are you to judge my friendship with my exactly. brother? Right? No, they haven't. They haven't got a clue. So, my next question: You obviously get a lot of smoke and you get a lot of, of flack, and uh, these Karen groups, as you have you referred to them, I'm going to remember that term. I've never heard it before. Uh, do come mm -hmm. at you very hard. Is there a reason um, why you are so public with your face, your image? Why aren't you, let's say, an anon account? Because you, I mean, you could, you tweet good content. You could be an anonymous account and still get your message across. Why do you put your face up? Yeah, to be honest with you, I didn't think about it when I started doing what I was doing. I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, I've got a great business. I've got money. Uh, like, I don't bend the knee to anybody. I don't really care what your opinion is. I'm, I'm just that zero fucks given kind of guy. Like, I've always kind of been that way. Um, so I just 
continued using my name and my face. There's a lot of guys out there that use their face, but they don't use the real name. Yes. Um, and I understand why they do it. Um, and there's a lot of guys that also don't use the real name or the real face. And I have a hard time believing somebody or forming a connection or trusting what they're saying if I can't evaluate who they are. Like, I know Tristan Tate. I know Andrew Tate. I've talked to your brother more than I've talked to you. Yeah. I can size you up, right? Like, like if somebody were to say to me, well, what do you think of the Tate brothers? Do you think that they're legit? Do you think they're full of shit? Do they rent their cars? Where do they get their money from? Blah, blah, blah. I have a pretty good idea that you guys are pretty much as as close to the um, – posts that you guys make so like that would be your reality but there's a lot of people that i just don't fucking trust because i can't see them i can't look into their eyes and i can't judge their character um i can judge their character by their voice like there's some faceless anon accounts that that broadcast over youtube or twitter mm -hmm. for example and you hear their voice and they sound like soy right it's like yeah. dude you sound like somebody with a you know with a patchy ass neck bird probably living in your mom's basement with low tea drinking soy milk right yeah but lots of guys will follow that advice. And I think that men especially need to evaluate. They, they need to consider the source. My dad always used to tell me when I was a kid, Rich, you know, you always have to consider the source. When, when somebody throws hate at you, ask yourself, are you willing to change your life with this person? Right? Like, are you willing to tra like, trade lives with them? Yeah. And the answer has always been no. Whenever I've looked at them, whenever somebody hates me, it's like, I would never trade my life for yours. Like, who exactly. are you? Yeah, no, you're completely right. And uh, what you have to look out for the uh, anon accounts as well are the famous, I, I call them the mask slips, when they play their character. And there was, and I don't remember his name, but I remember someone outed him, but there was a guy who tried to play the rich kind of playboy type of character, and he did it quite well for a while. And then someone found out he was like some 19-year-old fat kid living in his, living in his mother's uh, basement who walked mm. around in, in shorts and sandals all day. I can't remember the exact case. But um, yeah, a lot. Well, I mean, we've seen a few. Like, there was one guy on on Twitter that um, I don't know. Your brother had a falling out with, but he was in a full on, mm. uh, like you know, faceless account. Um, yeah, I can't I remember, remember his name. Illimitable man, tell your son this. That that was it. Yeah, yeah, and he was. was uh, I'm stoic. This is how to deal with women. This is how to treat women. And a lot of the stuff sounded very good. Um, and he literally had a full on mental breakdown and threatened to kill himself over an in internet girlfriend which I don't even right. think the term is real. Internet girlfriends are, right. as far as I'm concerned, working for somebody like me, hustling you for your money. If you haven't met the girl, that's, that's what she is. She's not your actual girlfriend. But this guy was threatening to blow his brains out over some chick, and that all leaked out. And, um, like, man, I mean, talk about a mask slip. How can you preach yeah. this stuff if that's you? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. bro, like, this is my real name. This is me. You know, come at me, right? Yeah, exactly. Which, which, is, which is why, I mean, it, you know what? And at the very beginning... When Andrew first kind of went public, he was verified on Twitter with his first account, and a lot of people started start coming at him. It never bothered Andrew, but it bothered me. I'm like, these people are saying these things, and I used to type replies mm -hmm. to them, and I just I just completely give up. Now, I mean, people type the worst shit possible. They, they'll, they'll mock my dead dad. Uh, they'll yeah. say that they hope my kids are born with deformities. Well, I mean, like, literally the worst shit you could imagine. And yeah, I read, yeah. and I smile, and I laugh, and I raise my glass, and I go and drive my Ferrari around. And, like, I don't right, care. yeah. You, you yeah, mentioned like, you it over. Yeah. I have um, you know, I have a system that I adopted. I um, you know, I saw a conversation between Bill Burr and Joe Rogan and they were talking about this very thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who it was that said it, but uh post and ghost. It's it's you know, post and never read the comments. And yeah. I find if you waste too much time reading the comments of these faceless anon accounts of of people that have like an opinion for everything, like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about 99% of the time. They're, exactly. they're just, oh, I'm an expert because I have an internet connection and I can now post thing on, on somebody's video or a Twitter post or whatever. It's like, dude, hop on a cast like this. Let me see your face. Where do yeah. you live, right? Exactly. I, I mean, it's, it's very easy also when you're pretending to play a character. You just read people who are the real deal. And you just kind of emulate the, the kind of things they say. I mean, when, when you don't show your it's face. It's a mask, you like you said. Face. Yeah, it's, it's super, super easy to do. But uh, the mask does yeah. slip. Uh, famously, uh, an account I came out with, uh, I came out with him recently, Rivalino, bragging about mm. how many women he sleeps with and what a playboy he is. And I, I literally said to him, I was like, yeah, you post. Is that the guy with the lines? Yeah, the line guy. So, uh, oh, the line guy. I mean, okay. I'm six foot four. There are pictures of me with women where I'm probably leaning in and hunching down. I mean, the guys yeah, you have not to when they're smaller. Me, yeah. I need to get into the. I need to get into the camera frame. You know, I'm a big dude, and I'm as alpha as they come. But uh, I, I look at those. No, lines bro, you're beta. Look at the line. Yeah. 
I mean, what was it? Hack Thor Bjornsson, the world's biggest, strongest man. I mean, he, he right. had one of those negative red lines. I, mean, I was like, Seven foot tall, 500 yeah, pounds. why don't you go up to his face and call yeah. him a beta? And, you know, see what he has to say exactly. about that. See what he has, he'll snap you in half. Literally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try mm. to fight that guy. Jesus, he's a monster. But uh, yeah, the Rivellino. So I, I, I kind of set him up. I, I asked him, I said, hey, man, you have really good tweets. He was like, oh, Tristan Tate likes me. Tristan Tate. Then he was posting about all these girls he had. I said, hey, bro, post some pictures. He went, no, 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 I'm Anon. I was like, yeah, yeah, stay Anon, but post some pictures of the girls. Blur their faces. Don't show yourself. Don't tell us your name. Stay Anon. Not saying he fucking just broke down. So uh, the mask mm-hmm. does slip eventually. And he said something stupid like he had he slept with seven women in four years or some bullshit. Like a good number for the average dude, I guess. But you're, you want to talk Playboy and you think that's the number? It reminded me of the scene in The 40-Year-Old Virgin when the guy's talking about feeling that girl's tit and how it felt like a sandbag. You know, he's, he's just, he's just <laughs> throwing things out there, hoping that he's going to land a hit. Oh, seven and four years. Yeah, that's good. He had no idea wow. how bad that was uh, to a guy yeah. like me. I mean, you've seen my, my journal I keep. So, I mean, yeah. Jesus, I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. can't take that seriously. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on. Yeah, we're going to move on from Anons to more about what you teach, because you're one of the guys that I can look at and I can think, okay, I can learn something from Rich Cooper. When I'm 46, I mean, you're in great shape, you're strong, you're still driving around in your supercar, you're still living life on your own terms. Um, I'm not going to ask you about your relationship status, etc. cetera, but I mean, you look like a very happy, very fulfilled man. Uh, and I've met 46 year olds who look like shit. They're one or two years away from a heart attack. They, I mean, they literally are at the end of the road and I don't feel anything could save them. So you're the kind of guy that can teach people things. So you talk a lot about maintaining frame. Now I'm asking you this honestly, because I don't really understand what that means because i think frame the way you put it some guys have it and some guys don't uh, i think characters like myself and my brother have always held our, our frame i guess quite well that i've never had to learn anything from a book but we do have 535 people watching us right now a lot of people don't know what that is can you touch on that and go into it a little bit well why don't we use the example that you guys preach the most which is comply or goodbye yeah. like that is frame control it's you know the, these are the boundaries that I'm going to set for you, sweetheart, because I love you and I care for you. And if you go outside of those boundaries, it's goodbye. And that's all that frame control really is, is she needs to be in the frame of a strong masculine man that she admires, that she respects, that she adores. And that's essentially what you're aiming to do. But most guys don't do that. What they'll do is they'll just get a stamp, like Chris Rock talked about in his stand-up, uh, Never Scared, I think it was. Yep. And they'll just stamp everything. Yes, 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 honey. Yes, yes, yes. And... The process of of making all of these concessions over a period of time is known as betatization over a thousand concessions. It starts with something like, honey, put the uh, white socks in the white hamper and the dark socks in the dark hamper and don't brush your teeth over there by the window because it's going to get on the carpet, blah, 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 chirp. And it turns into let's go vegan together. And then a few years later, it turns into I love you, but I don't love you anymore Mm -hmm. because over time. And you see these guys all the time, right? I mean, like you see all these 40 year old guys, 50 year old guys, they've got like the barbed wire tattoo, like around their arm, you know, when it was cool back in the day, but now they're fat, you know, they look horrible. They've got some care and wife chirping them all the time. Who's 300 pounds that doesn't respect him. Hasn't had sex with him in forever. And he's just miserable. And this is why frame is important because in every relationship, one person enters the other person's frame. If you're a strong masculine, um, what did you call the podcast again? Alpha God or God mode? God mode. God mode. God mode. So, so I mean, if you're a strong masculine guy running God mode, she's going to be in your frame. But for the most part, the vast majority of society with men, men are operating in their wives' frame. Frame. They they almost always defer to her as the leader in the relationship. And society programs that right, like it encourages it. it you know, it's why you see guys. Like one of the things that makes me sick is when you see these guys make these posts on social media, a picture of him and his girlfriend or him and his wife. And it's like our five year, our 10 year anniversary, my much, much better half. I couldn't have done all of this shit without her, blah, 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 blah. And then you click through on her and it's fucking crickets. She's got nothing nice to say about the guy. And you know who runs that relationship, right? So that's really what frame is, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the equivalent, I guess, uh, for the for the younger generation is when you see a guy um, t- going to exotic locations. I mean, he's in, I don't know, Jamaica, Mexico, Barbados with his girlfriend, and there's pictures of them holding hands on the beach, and there's pictures of them eating dinner together, and there's pictures of them at the restaurants. And then you click on her profile, and it's just so, you know, he's holding the camera. That's the guy mm-hmm. he is, you know, taking the hot Instagram pic so she can have her. Yeah, he's the Instagram boyfriend. 
Yeah, exactly. So she can get her followers up and get hit up by dudes with blue ticks who have a, a higher social value than him. And um, <laughs> what I like to do when I travel now is I like to fuck with these guys, right? So like, I'll see them taking pictures of their girlfriends and I'll just walk up to them. I'll be like, you know, tap them on the shoulder and be like, hey man, are you one of those Instagram boyfriends? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what they are. And then I'll turn around and walk away and I'll be like, you know, she's going to use that to get the attention of other guys on her Instagram account. I'll just fucking cruise away. Because <laughs> that's what an Instagram account is. That's what it's for. I mean, it's I true, always man. say, if you, if I, if I have a, a main chick or, or, a, or a side chick, even, if I'm running, I don't know how many, depending on how many relationships I'm running, if I have a girl who says she's in love with me, I'll hear with her. I'll say, delete Instagram. If she doesn't instantly mm -hmm. comply and delete her Instagram and not give a fuck, does she really love mm -hmm. you? Like, mm -hmm. no, because because women love attention. They crave attention constantly. Right. They're always checking their likes. They're always checking their feed. Oh, who's this person who liked me? Girls and guys. Um, and yeah. that's never, ever a good thing. So, I mean, I, I let girls keep their social media. I'm not some weird controlling guy, but that is a good test for you, for young guys out there. Tell oh, her to delete her Instagram. She won't do it. Then it's Instagram I'll, and other male attention over you, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this this way, right? Because I spent some time in my book and a couple of chapters on this very topic. But if you're vetting a chick for a long term relationship, I mean, for mother stock, if you're looking for a wife or something like that, for whatever crazy reason, you know, you're thinking about getting married, if she's running an Instagram account, and it's not a business, like she's not selling something, you know, she doesn't have a product or service that she sells, like, that's the reason why she runs it. And it's public. She's basically on the ice trying to score a goal. She's she's going to be selling herself and marketing herself publicly with with the post. So if you see these sexy posts, these provocative posts, and it's just her and all this sort of stuff, then you've got somebody that's that's still looking to actively upgrade. And what you said is true. You know, you've got to put your foot down and say, look, you know, um, you know, girlfriends with boyfriends don't behave this way. Yep. So you can either make your Instagram, you know, your Instagram account private where it's just you and your family, or you can delete it, right? Yeah. Oh, or, I mean, a third option is every third or fourth picture have pictures with me. You know, I love my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, that, that's acceptable enough. But as someone like me, as, as public as I am, I, I, would, I, would never, I would never want yeah. that. But for a lot of guys, that is an option. So, yeah, post pictures of us together. Right. By yeah. all means, yeah. you know, because, because then she can still show off her life, show off her little vacation, show off her new shoes and whatever, and try and build her following because maybe she wants to be a fucking influencer or whatever it is. But it's very clear she has a boyfriend. And some girls do have Instagram accounts like that. There are some girls with millions of followers who are with their husband and says married and all half their pictures are with their husband. They somehow, yeah, yeah. fair enough. You know, that, that's, I think that's still acceptable uh, because they're not advertising themselves as available. But man, I see, I see it all the time. And I put this on Twitter the other day. These girls... I, I said this, and you understand this actually. You're a high, you're a high social value guy. I'm going to move on to what social value is in a moment, and and your takes on it. But I said, if you're a beautiful woman, you see the worst aspects of male character: the unsolicited dick pictures, the "I'm going to rape you if I see you," all that nonsense. But if you're a high mm. value man, you see the worst aspects of female character. So then I posted a screenshot of some girl who was begging yeah, me to take her to Dubai. Oh, you're in Dubai. I want to fly out with you. I'll come and see you. I don't fly girls out. You know, unless I mean long term girlfriends I go on vacation with, but I don't fly girls out to Dubai who I don't know. That's not my game. I told her no. And a few weeks later, she posted some picture of some her and some dude saying two years with my baby. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. He's lucky I don't fly girls out to Dubai. I would have taken his girl from him. And uh, yeah, she's advertising. <laughs> she's advertising for something better, just like you said. Um, Alpha seed, beta need, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, you know, it's just common out there. It's yeah, so common. Hilarious. So, um, yeah, social value now. You preach a lot about maintaining social value. Now, I've, I've seen guys actively, so this is advice you could probably give to me. I've seen guys actively deteriorate from the ages of 30 to 40 in, in quite a big way. Um, obviously, I think I know how to avoid that. Um, I see myself and my value as a man certainly going up every single year. I'm 32. Uh, I'm nowhere near peak. Um, what would you say to younger guys, uh, maybe guys of, of my age or, or late 20s, about maintaining your social value as you, as you get older? Well, I think your social value, I mean, if you're a guy on a purpose that's chasing excellence in life is going to go up by osmosis. It's not like you're going to have to try that hard. Um, you and your brother, as an example, I can't see why you wouldn't be wealthier as you, as you get older and have more reach, more influence. I mean, as long as you don't do anything stupid and fuck it up, basically, mm. um, you'll, you'll be on the right path and the right trajectory. The thing that guys need to understand is there's still, you know, the importance of optics, right? Like what you look like. Um, I know what my value is on the sexual marketplace. I know what my, you know, um, 
detractors are and I know what my positives are, right? Like I'm a bald man. So what am I going to do? Am I going to hold on to scraps? Okay, well, that's one thing I can do. I can get a hair transplant. I can tattoo my scalp or I can just shave a fucking thing, grow a bitch and beard and just look, you know, have a look. Yeah, I'm a year or two away from that, by the way. You know, my hair is not what it used to be when I was 25. But I mean, it's still there for now. But one or two years, I'll just shave my head, you know, and it, it's, it. I'll grow a bigger beard. Yeah, it, it's, beard. it's, yeah. it's, it's part of life. Like it's part of aging. Like you understand, but you know, like as I look around at other guys, my age, like I'm 47 now, but as I look around at other guys, my age, most of them don't even look anything close to me. Right. Like I, I, agree. I can date women as young as her early twenties, all the way up to 50. If I want, I, I mean, older, even if I want, but I don't even mess with anything that old to be honest with you. Yeah, but, worry. um, yeah, like you, like you want to look the part. Um, what's the point in having money, having a great social circle, having fun stuff to do if you're living in an unhealthy, inflamed, sick body, you're overweight, your knees hurt, you can't fucking walk, you, you know, you fall. get out of the shower and you look down. Yeah, you get out of the shower, you look down, and you can't see your dick because you got a big fat belly covering it up. Like there's there's so many guys out there that that could improve their lifestyle just by taking some ownership and really doubling down and doing some work on themselves. And I get hate for that all the time. Oh, Rich, why do you tell guys to do that? Like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's not worth it, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Go sit in your corner and cry about it. I don't care. Yeah, do whatever you want more for you yeah more for people like you yeah exactly i mean i always say anyone can do it but not everyone can do it in terms of you know because yep. if everyone did it it wouldn't be special so i mean if everyone stayed in shape and got rich and drove supercars around and you know read books and became smart i mean it would, it would suck it would mean nothing so yeah well that's the thing that you know that i find funny is there's is there's so many guys complaining about stuff online on an ongoing basis and they just sound like these whingy whiny little bitches mm. and they don't understand how unattractive that is to the world to women like women want to be with high value guys men want to be high value guys it's innate it's in our yeah. dna stop fighting it stop lying to yourself yep. Right. Or just shut up and sit in the corner and cry about it with, you know, the rest of the people that want to cry about it. Yeah. And, and when these crybabies call people like you lucky, um, I've used this example on myself, but I'm, I'm going to translate it to I'm going to translate it to you uh, in an alternate universe somewhere sitting in Canada. There is a 46 year old man named Rich Cooper who is six foot two. He still has his height, but he's fat and he's old. And he's had two heart bypasses already and he never gave a shit about his appearance and he never went to the gym and he never made money and he's broke. And he's, you know, so people say, oh, well, you're lucky. There's, there's no luck involved because a lot of work no. comes into it. I'm saying with I say, I mean, yes, I'm tall, but you know, the years of being a professional athlete, all the hard work to went into business, these crybabies don't understand that it's not just luck. You're not just a high value dude or you're not, uh, you know, you have to, you have to look smacks, right? Like there's some areas of my, again, I'm bald. I've got, I've got third, I've got third degree burns all over my uh, chest. Like, I don't know if you can see here on my chest, right? Okay. So yeah, I've got third. See, yeah. Okay, so I got burns on my chest. I got burns on my arms. Um, I have to wear glasses to read shit, right? Like I don't have great vision, yeah. right? So I'm not perfect, right? But you have to max out in the areas that you can control, right? And see, women have patience for a 22-year-old guy that's an alpha Chad with a plan, but they don't have patience for a guy that's 46 years old with a plan. They don't care, right? Yeah. Women hang out at the finish line and they fuck the winners. Yeah. That's how they operate. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. And I, I found that as a, as my values increased more and more and more, I, I have found that. But what I do is I just fuck the girls waiting at the finish line and I leave them back there for, for somebody else to marry. Um, so that's, that's be the winner way. at the finish line. That's yeah, exactly. really as simple as that, right? Exactly. But, but yeah, guys like to complain. Guys don't really, you know, they don't take ownership. I think they don't take responsibility. Um, so yeah. you're talking about, you're talking about, okay, you're, I mean, I'm losing my hair. I got, my teeth aren't straight. My nose has been broken a few times, but as you know, women don't find men attractive for the same reason men find women attractive. I mean, I wouldn't date a woman who was losing her hair with crooked teeth and a broken nose. I wouldn't, but plenty of women date me. Um, it's, it's not about looks so much for a man. It's about being a man, being manly. Certainly being in shape uh, is very, very important, but you can be ugly as fucking in shape. I know guys who look like monsters with beautiful wives. You know, their face yeah. has been smashed up in the MMA cage and, you know, they're, they're dating nine out of 10 fucking models here in Romania, certainly. So yeah. um, looks, you know, money, status, right? Yeah. Like those are the main things. Game, of course, you know, game can be an equalizer if you know how to game women. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and good for them. Now you've, um, I, I don't know exactly what, what ages you were married in between. I don't think, I don't think it matters that much. I'm going to ask you um, because I have quite a young audience, especially a lot of the people from Eastern Europe watching me, they'll be 16 to 18. Um, mm. How have you found 
And the latter part of your answer is going to help me as well. How have you found, uh, let's call it the sexual marketplace or the dating marketplace or uh, just, just dating or, or meeting women as a man different throughout the decades? Because you can be like late teens, 20s, oh, 30s, 40s. Yeah. Can you, can you yeah, break change, it down? But I mean, so, I mean, as, as you get older, you should, in effect, become better with game and with women because, I mean, if you're paying attention to stuff, you should be learning from your lessons. Don't lose when shit goes sideways. Learn from the experience. There's a silver lining in it. Pick yourself back up. Don't cry like a bitch. Dust off your shoulders and get back to work, right? Um, so as you get older, your your um, value as a man should increase. Um, with that being said, uh, if it is increasing, then you should have better experiences with women. Like I have better experiences now than what I did in my twenties. Okay. Um, you're never going to get away from, you know, you're going to have the best sex of your life in your twenties because everything's working. Like all the cylinders are firing a hundred percent. Like when you get older, you start getting on testosterone replacement th therapy. You never thought about things like Cialis when you're fucking 20. Right. But these are all things that you introduce in your life and your protocol, and, you know, because you want to live as an optimized guy and have a good experience with women. But as you get older, you will have to do more work. Like your body does break down, right? One of the things that I always tell guys over and over again that they probably don't listen to that I probably wouldn't have listened to when I was 20 or 16 or whatever, but time flies, man. Like I can think back to times when I was 21, 22, 23, wasting time doing some of the dumbest shit in my life that I probably could have Me used too. for better outcomes. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I never thought about it because at 22 years old, you're way closer to your birth date than you are the grave. Yeah. At 47, I'm probably closer to the grave than I am my birth date now, right? A man of my size, I'm there already. I mean, 32. I should live more than 65, 66. It'd be 100. Yeah, most kilograms. big guys don't live too long. Yeah. There's not a lot of, you know, big, you know, six foot whatever guys that are 90 years old. They don't yeah, live exactly. that long. No, it's, it's true. So I'm, I'm probably about the halfway point if I'm lucky. Uh, but, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Better to live 100 years as a lion. As, uh, no, 100. Uh, 100 Better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep, blah, blah, blah. Sheep, yeah. That old thing. So, you know, I'll, I'll take that. I'm perfectly fine being a six foot four, 110 kilogram man. <laughs> That's fine by me. Um, so, you have said before, and I'm going to get on to a few things that we don't agree on in a moment. Let's do which it. Is, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but you said before, and this one I'm 50 50 about, but I'd like you to explain your point of view when you say there's no such thing as that women are either good or women, is either, or women are either bad. There's no such thing as a perfect woman. Yeah, I don't think there's a perfect woman. I think that women are just women. Yes, but but uh, I'm going to throw something out there to you. I mean, it's because it's okay. it, it's kind of uh, the opposite of something that I like to teach. I believe if you meet a woman uh, young enough with uh, low enough body count, uh, plenty of naivety, plenty of respect, uh, still a healthy respect for men, so probably a good relationship with her father, I believe mm -hmm. you could convert women um, to your perfect woman. There's no woman that's perfect for every single man. But I know guys, um, and I'm not going to say their names, but you probably know exactly who I'm thinking of, guys I know very, very well, who have women who they met when they were 16, and mm. they are essentially, for all intents and purposes, perfect for that man. Would, would you not agree yeah, you can. Yeah, like, I mean, guys use the term training women, and... Um, People hate the term, but it's true. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I suppose you can uh, train them by enforcing boundaries, mm -hmm. but... When I say that, you know, women are just women, it's because guys are always like, well, I'm looking for a high value woman. Like, how do I find a good girl? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, the thing that you have to understand, like I mentioned earlier, um, not all women can de can can destroy a man in, in family court, but all women could, right? So not to say that they're going to do it, but they could. So when I say that, you know, women are just women, I think that if you understand female nature, that's what matters more than, you know, let's try to decipher the good ones from the bad ones. I mean, you definitely want to keep the bad ones out of your life. You don't want to invite them to your inner circle. You don't want to have anything on a long-term basis with them. Um, so you should be repelling those out of your life. So yeah, you definitely want to make decisive choices when it comes to these women that you invite inside. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, all women are pretty much the same when it comes to their operating system. Like they use pretty much the same firmware. Can you, you know, can you enforce boundaries? Can you do some work with that? For sure, yeah, of course. Okay, no, fair enough. So Your I answer. think that we're in disagreement. It's just I'm I'm looking at it as an older guy because I'm 47. Yeah, and, and we'll say, and the problem is with women is, and I'll say it right here, right now, and God knows which women I know that are watching this. So I'm probably going to get my phone blowing up with a bunch of insults after this. But also, you know, you could get the perfect woman, but you know, time is the fire in which we all burn, and and women expire before men do. 
I mean, you can be 24, you can have a 16 year old wife. It's all going perfectly fine. You love her and it's great. And then suddenly you're 50 and you're still, you still got the hots for women in their early twenties. And, uh, yeah, she just doesn't cut it anymore. Um, which is, right. you know, which is, which is why I think women need to stick to their gender role, have some kids, have your babies Then their value is in, in being a mother and gender roles is something that you talk a lot about. Now Ideally, it's also, yeah. it's also something that I judge women on who's a good one. Who's a bad one. I think a very early yeah, test for women is how to understand gender roles. Do you want to go into this a bit? Because it's something that you talk a, a lot about. Yeah, I mean, like you'll see these women that um, think that they're that they're high value and they deserve a high value guy because they're a third year law student. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, like, okay. even if you get a degree, frame it in mahogany and put it on your wall. Like, I married a lawyer. Like, I know what it's like to be with a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care. Right. Like women Nobody don't does. share their pot of gold with men. And in fact, any woman that gets into a profession where it's it's designed to create acrimony, where they're designed to, you know, fight with the other side on a consistent basis. Guess what? That's going to invite itself into your relationship. Right now. Why would you want to get involved or mess with a chick like that when you can find a woman that's more compliant, that's more feminine, that will defer to the masculine and look at you as her best option, not. I don't need no man to control me or any of that. Like, mm -hmm. fine, enjoy your cats. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> and, and that's one thing I will say about Eastern Europe. I've met women here, 18, 19 years of age. I said, oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? They say, oh, I'd like to find a good man and get married and, and have a family. And they have a body count of zero or one. Like these, these women good. do exist out here. I think in the West, it's a lot harder. I'd say probably my guess would be Canada's probably better than the United States. The United States it's is... Bro, I mean, <laughs> you could date a hundred women. Like you could go out with a hundred women here, yeah. and one might be worth a second or third date. Jesus, is it that bad? It's is brutal it here. Bad? Oh man, it's brutal. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. so here's here's another question. This is something. This is something we may disagree on because I largely okay. disagree with you in every aspect of this. But I'm going to hit you with some exceptions that you probably okay. haven't heard. So, single mothers. Fuck them, don't fuck them, date them, don't date them. Hit me, Richard. What do you have? You what played them, you don't do? date them. You played them, you don't date them. I mean, like, the extent of your involvement with single mothers, and, and as you get older, guys, you're going to run into more women that have children in tow from past relationships. Um, I cover single mothers an entire chapter in my book, okay? There's really a lot to get in with this one, but at the end of the day, the juice really isn't worth the squeeze because the amount of extra liability that you take on dating a single mother, it's just not worth it. I mean, you're far better off finding a woman that doesn't have children because your life is that much simpler. Yeah, you know what, you've already, you've already hit the nail on the head. When you said play them and don't date them, I didn't think you were gonna throw that one out there because I had a, I had an example for you I was gonna hit you with. So, um, and in fact- I've, I've, yeah. I've dated lots of single mothers. I know that you have as well. I mean, yeah. there was one famous one that was a total smoke show, right? That's but the one I was gonna say. <laughs> mine, you know. Yeah, mine, mine was very attractive as well that I got into my LTR with. I mean, she looked like Jennifer Aniston. I'd go on yeah. vacation, people would be like, oh wow, you know, all this sort of, but the thing that you gotta remember is all of that stuff goes away Yes. When you start dealing with the drama that comes along with her bringing some other dude's child in tow from a past relationship yeah, into I, your life. I never saw that that woman's kid. And I'm sure the people are going to start, the Romanians watching, I'm going to start typing her name out in the comments. So, so I'm not going to say her name. But yeah, she's a millionaire. She's super famous, uh, super famous television presenter. Looks like a, a smoking hot model. Now, the guys, it's not, you're not one of them. But there are guys out there who will curse all single mothers and say, don't go near them, don't touch them. And I always say, like with a picture of this woman, you're telling me that this loser wouldn't touch this girl. Like, come on. Like, yeah. I mean, there's, like there's, play him, don't date him. Play him, don't date him. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll break down the exception for you because I put it in my chapter. So yeah. in the chapter on single moms, I break down every reason why you want to stay away from them. And there's, trust me, there's far more why you want to stay away from them than oh, you'd want to invite them in your oh, life. The one exception that I would I would consider it if it existed would be well I've got a kid if she had a kid the same age same gender as mine and she had all of her shit together didn't yes. bring any other baggage to the table had no other red flags then and only then I might consider it but for that to happen it's like you know finding a pot of gold at the end end of the rainbow you don't yeah. go looking for it you don't go well if I have the choice between this kid that you know this chick that doesn't have kids and the one that's got these three kids from two different guys who are you going to date I'm going to make time for this one and that's what most guys should be doing absolutely and it's, it's exactly what I do but I mean you you read my my blog which is coming out at the end of this year at the end of this year I might, might turn it into a book we'll see but but god no you you see that I play on different levels so the, 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 yeah. the amount of time I will 
invest in a woman like that is, is simply for the, uh, you know, go to a restaurant, have your sex, have your fun, drink some champagne. Yeah. But it's but yeah, I, I've never I'd never meet anyone's kids, spend time with anyone's kids, pick up another man's kid. I mean, so, yeah, you are very, very right on single mothers. But I thought you were going to say stay away under all circumstances, in which case I was going to hit you with that one exception. So, you know, no, I get why, I get why, lots why not, of why not, why like, not banger, you know. Bro, I get lots of guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I get lots of guys that are like sending me uh, field reports and conversations with you know single mothers, and it's like, look, if you're dating them, like, if you just want to like have a friends with benefit type of relationship, okay, fine. But when you start complaining to me about the shit that's going down because of her kids behaving badly and the baby daddy drama, it's like, okay, why did you invite this into your life? Like, why did you take it to that level? Right? Like, blame yourself for this. Exactly. And, and to be fair, single mothers where I live aren't really that common in the united states i mean i don't really pretty know. Common here, yeah I, I don't date in north america very much but i i, I swipe on tinder if i travel you know and you just see i've got three kids mm -hmm. i've got two kids i've got eight kids i've got four. i'm just like the fuck? why would i why would i meet you like I don't oh, some of them are even pregnant when they're on the dating yeah, apps no, i know i know you post these your posts are absolutely atrocious those are my favorite ones so yeah, like yeah. Tear apart. <laughs> and um yeah I, I, and, but, but to be fair here it's it's a more traditional society i've never seen anything like that i think even if a woman was left in a situation where she where she was pregnant without a man she's not downloading tinder no 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 right. not, not over here not, not in the, the most orthodox Christian i know but here they've got no shame man yeah i know it's ridiculous uh, one of the girls i dated here i famously said she was a 26 year old virgin and she was a nine. Mm. And people say, oh, no, I don't believe it. There's no such thing as a 26-year-old virgin. I'm like, okay, you think I, Tristan Tate, don't know a virgin when he fucks one? Like, seriously, fucking give me a break. But um, yeah, yeah. But in North America, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a unicorn. I think that's, that's basically mythical, isn't it? Uh, in England, it certainly is. That's where I lived um, for a long time. And uh, I remember I was in England for three months in my early 20s, and there was a lot of single moms pushing yeah. around kids yeah. and prams, yeah. you know. And uh, it's, it's only got worse. It's only got worse. And yeah. I love I love to, to to talk about them on my Twitter and talk about how they, you know, mismanage manage their families. It's, I, I attract all sorts of smoke and all sorts of hate for that. But uh, largely, I'm right. So, it, like with you, well, uh, when, when the haters are coming at you, but you're basically people, right all the time. Well, people don't get mad if it's a lie, right? They're just yeah. like ah, whatever. You know, they, they only get mad and they only get offended if it's true. <laughs> like a bomber yeah. only gets flack over the target, right? Yeah, or if there's an element of truth to it, that's when people get most Correct. offended. Someone, you know, I mean, it was it was Troy Francis saying the other day, people keep calling him a homosexual. He's like, I don't care if you call me a homosexual because I'm not. And then someone came out of him for like being into BDSM. He was like, I wrote a book about being into BDSM. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh no, you caught me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. What what next? The Tate brothers are webcam pimps. Like, well, what's the next yeah. big story? Which is oh. <laughs> which brings me to a point where we will have some slight disagreement on and I'm super interested to hear this. All right. OnlyFans. OnlyFans mm -hmm. is the big one right now on Twitter. Everybody's talking about OnlyFans, especially now in the pandemic with every single girl trying to get a part of this hustle. And um, yeah, I get it. Uh, it's filled with cheap, trashy, dirty women you wouldn't want to touch. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the nature of, of a business like this. But what do you think about, could you date a girl who does OnlyFans? Would you recommend well, it to, to younger guys? Well, you guys are unique, right? Like you operate in God mode. So you have to understand that, you know, when I say things about certain areas like OnlyFans, generally speaking, most guys, if they're if they're messing with women on OnlyFans is because they're simping and they're throwing the money or exactly. two, they're a guy dating a chick on OnlyFans. She's getting all the money and using it and he's taking the pictures for her, getting no value out of it. Yes. You guys flip the script though. You're like, all right, well, we've run rep webcam businesses. So let's show these girls how to be an OnlyFan, uh, you know, chick. Yeah. And if they're giving you money, fine, whatever. I mean, <laughs> um, I wouldn't want like the mother of my kids to be on OnlyFans or anything like that, but I understand the model that you use, so I can't really fault it. So we're not in disagreement from I that understand. perspective. I mean, it's, it's it's just the way that most guys look at OnlyFans right now in the West. It's like they they're just throwing money at these garden tools all yeah. day long, yeah. thinking that they're going to win over their affection, their their attention, their love. Yeah. And then and on the flip won't. side of the coin. There's some bonehead that's taking all the pictures while she's raking in all, all the money, getting all the attention from these guys, and he and he has nothing to show for it but a bunch of pictures of her on his phone that he's taken. You're right, you're right. But um, the, the the character of the type of woman, I I I really do believe that a lot of the 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 flack that OnlyFans girls take is because in the West, the trashiest women in the West, women can get careers. In the West, a woman can make fifty thousand dollars per year working at whatever job after getting her law degree, etc. But 
the oh, girls but there's women that offense. make fifty thousand dollars a month leaving yes. their husband. Like there was this one example um, <laughs> that I came across last year. I'm sure you know the one. She was a uh, a, a pastor, and she was married. She had two or three kids or something like that. She left her husband at thirty seven to go and be an OnlyFans model. Gee, right, mean, like, give me a freaking break, lady. Grow up, man. Yeah, but I hey, know, listen, you know, she's making fifty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. The good but, side of it all is she's probably paying him money now because family law is, is written in such a way that it it basically piles both the incomes in a pot and splits them down the middle. There's yeah. no way he's making fifty thousand dollars a month, so at least he's getting that out of it. Exactly. Let's let's hope so. Let's hope so. But uh, I'll take I'll take this quick second to say that there are girls, especially in Eastern Europe, who treat OnlyFans webcamming like a career, they'll have a body count of one, they'll have husbands, they'll be married, but there's no other way for them to bring in 150,000 bucks a year and they, they treat it very professionally. It's essentially like being an actress, but when you meet them in real life, they aren't hoes. And uh, I'll say that there are girls on OnlyFans at Webcam that aren't hoes. Shoot the message, um, shoot me if you like, but I, I know this business better than anyone. But in the I don't States, have any personal so experience, much. so yeah. I have nothing to say about yeah. that. I mean, I know a virgin um, for webcams, literally. I mean, she's not a virgin because I'm the only guy who's banged her, but she was doing webcam for a year right. as a virgin. So yeah. it's hard to call but a I virgin mean, like, a hoe. Yeah, like the flip side of that too, and I and I kind of got into this with your brother, um, I don't know, last year sometime, but we were talking about female employees, and he turned it into, um, well, webcam models um, – you know, basically aren't aren't that bad of a thing. And I'm like, bro, I'm not working with any women employees on a go forward basis. I'm a company of one. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I'm not employing women to do anything for me. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. And especially in the West, man, I know. Um, in fact, I'm not going to say her name, but she's a relative of, relative of mine who's a big lawyer in Chicago. And she was talking brazenly on her Facebook about a man who kissed a woman at a bar, but the woman worked for him. So now the woman's suing him because he had some sort of power or duress over her and she's going to take yeah. him for everything he's got. I'm like, you can't kiss your employees. I mean, I used to have, I've, 70, I've... I used to have 75 webcam models working for me. I used to fuck half my employees. Andrew would fuck the yeah, other right. half. Like, not Eastern Europe, man. I couldn't run that business in the United States. It, you could run it, but you, I couldn't run it the way I run it. It would have had to be a- Hey, listen, if you guys show. can pull it off, I, you know, I tip my hat to you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, fair enough. All right. So you know what, Richard? We don't actually disagree on basically anything, do we? I was hoping to get into some, you know, more of a slightly. I don't know. Well, <laughs> well, what about tattooed women? Ah, tattooed women. Now, this is a good one. Okay. Now, I have a very unique view on tattooed women because it all depends on the context in which they get their tattoos. So I will say that I know girls who have a body count of one. Let's call their ex boyfriend Christian. Now they have tattoos saying, I love Christian, back of their neck, on their leg, on their hips, etc. And they're still with Christian. So they're tattooed women with a, with a body count of one who are madly in love. I don't know this Christian character. I think his last name is Kate. But uh, yeah, he's quite a savage cat. Now these women have tattoos. Now are they damaged goods to anyone who gets them after Christian? Maybe. Well, they're basically alpha widowed. Yeah, no, I mean, any woman that tattoos the name of a man on her body yes. saw that man as her best possible option because yeah. tattoos last a long time. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, um, yeah, she's she's probably going to be alpha widowed. Yeah, but uh, you know what? I believe, and we will disagree on this, I don't know what the United... Different countries have different cultures, man. I've met women who love the tattooed look. They love the uh, oh, the aesthetics of it just like a lot of men do. And they have been very good girls. And uh, maybe, you know, I live in a traditional Christian country where a girl could think I'm going to have a tattoo and I'm going to have a tattoo here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get the rosary beads sometimes tattooed on their, their wrist. I know in America, that's a red flag and that just means ho. But I've met some girls. Now, tattooed women are sluttier than non-tattooed women. I'm not going to, I'm not going to die on that hill. They are. Yeah. But I've met some girls who are very, very good church going girls who have a lot of tattoos, man. I just have, but maybe that's for me. Yeah, I just, I just don't have that experience. My experience with tattooed women has always been they've they've got a lot of red flags and uh, they really have more problems than a than a Chinese math test going on in their life, and I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, fair enough. And you know what? It, it, that may just I'm sure that some exist that difference. aren't mentally insane, but generally speaking, the more tats they have and the greater the frequency of them, the more likelihood there is going to be that she's got some red flags going on in her life. I, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. I'm saying that, but I think there are more exceptions to the tattoo rule in the country that I live in. That's, that's I guess, Probably, the only yeah. thing I can put it down to because uh, keep in mind, I, I, I dated English women from age 16 to about 24 
And after that, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Horrible, right? No, but even, you know, do you know what? To be fair, even when I was 19, 18, 19 to 24, a lot of the girls I was dating were from Poland, Slovakia. I speak Mm -hmm. Polish. I speak Slovak. I learned the languages working at the McDonald's restaurant I used to work at. So I used to pick them up in my hometown. So I was into Mm -hmm. Eastern European women, really, as as far as my late teens. But um, I was too. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, I mean, the Eastern European and Russian women, some of the most beautiful women in the world, hands down, in, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But um, yeah, I, I lived in Slovakia for a year and a half. Now I've lived in Romania for five years. I think it's just a, a different culture and a different experience. I, I think I've met girls here who have got tattoos and thought, I want to get a tattoo. I think this will look nice on me. And they still have only had one serious boyfriend in their life. Uh, their dad didn't beat them up or touch them inappropriately. And there's no red flags or trauma. I have seen that. Now, apparently in the United States, it's a very different game. I, I haven't slept with all that many American women. Um, you know, I, I Tinder around when I'm in L.A. and, and, and California and um, New York. And the women I meet are always, I mean, they're hot, but garbage. I mean, I, I think that's just the nature of, of America, I think. But I'm telling you, come out and see me, Rich, one time. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to two or three women who have tattoos, and uh, you could judge them for yourself. I, th- I think that's fair. Right. If, you're, if you're ever on Eastern Europe, you're invited any single time. For sure. Um, now, I, I've heard, and I'm just going to bring this up uh, in a moment because we're coming up when we're, we're over an hour now. We're going to talk about your books momentarily. Yep. But uh, I heard that uh, a character by the name of James Altucher opened your eyes to a, mm-hmm. to a lot of things. Now, I'm a James Altucher fan, as of, and I don't know if you know this, uh, but after my father passed away, I didn't know who James Altucher was. But he famously played a chess game against my father at a tournament. And he wrote this big yeah. write-up about this character that he respected so much for his indomitable spirit. And my dad was obviously very famous in the chess world. So I became a James Altucher fan after that. So when I heard you were mm-hmm. into him, I'd like to know who is James Altucher first for the, for the 635 people watching this podcast. And uh, what did you learn from him? Because I have a lot of respect for that guy. So. He's... Um... He's a very quirky, nerdy, Jewy looking guy from New York. Mm-hmm. I met him at a conference um, a few years ago in Napa Valley. Um, he was he was married to an Argentinian girl at the time, I think. I think he's divorced from her now. So that was his second wife. Um, he's, he's, he's quite clever with his words. I mean, uh, Choose Yourself was a good book. I recommend you guys take a look at it if it's something you haven't come across. Um, I don't spend that much time reading any of his other material, but... I like some of the concepts that he um, put together in some of the blogs. I mean, one of the things that I tripped across one time was um, he was talking about dealing with haters and haters are like pigs. You know, they want you to get down in the mud and roll around with them. And that's what makes them happy. Um, don't waste your time engaging with these pigs, basically, is what he said. So mm-hmm. I think he's clever with the way that he writes. He, you know, he's definitely smart when it comes to his writing. He's got an interesting podcast. I wouldn't lean on him for advice on women. I mean, the guy's been married practically three times now. Um, and he hasn't got much of a style about him or, or exudes much in the way of masculinity, but mm. I don't think he would argue those points if I, you know, if I sat beside him and said that. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Um, so, I mean, we've covered basically everything I want to cover. Um, everybody from uh, Romania, Eastern Europe, etc. I'm going to do a bit of a question and answer session uh, for the next, no, for it, it, for about 10 minutes. If I read any good questions coming up now, I am now looking at the feed. Um, if it's a good question, I'm going to answer it. Uh, if it's for me or I'll pass it over to Rich, if it's for Rich, uh, f- but for the next five minutes, I want to ask Rich about his books because I didn't know about your books until uh, a couple hours before this podcast when I was doing some reading up. So, I mean, you've written a number of titles. Um, tell me about them. Tell me what they are. So the unplugged alpha is my most recent one, really the only one that I would call like the main piece of work because the other stuff I wrote before when I was in the debt business and I was basically putting together DIY guides on how to settle your own debt. So mm-hmm. this is it over here again. It's called the unplugged alpha, the no bullshit guide to winning with women in life. Um, it's on Amazon as a Kindle or a, uh, a print copy. If you're in a country where you can't get it because Amazon's not available, go to bookdepository.com and they will ship it to you. It's basically everything that I've learned throughout my entire life so that you can get better results with women in life and not make stupid mistakes like I did, like get involved with a single mom and her kids or think that women are sugar and spice and all things nice or that marriage is a good idea. Um, and I break down in a logical assessed way why you want to pay attention to these things so that you can get better results. Basically, I look at life like this. If you plot out a map and there's minefields everywhere, you know, single mommy over here, uh, chick with daddy issues, 
She's got 7,000 tattoos and a notch count of 7,000. Um, you know, you just mark those out on the map and you tend to avoid them. So you navigate around them. That's really what the book does for guys. Okay, absolutely. Now, guys, check out the book. He just told you where it was, uh, where it was available. Uh, rewind this video if you don't know. Uh, the questions you guys are asking are all awful. I mean, <laughs> no offense. How do you start a webcam business? I, I tweet about this all day long. Check out CobraTech.com. Um, yeah, and a lot of a lot of very personal questions uh, to Rich. You know, how do you raise your kids? Blah blah blah. Um, this is this is one good question. I will throw to you. I will throw to you, Rich, because you, you made a lot of your money when you were younger. How, I mean, you mentioned you were an entrepreneur um, and you ran several businesses. Some did well, some didn't. But, but how did you make your money? You're obviously a, a well-to-do guy. This is Most of it came question. from the credit card debt relief company. It, it still runs today. It's been around for almost 20 years. My brother runs a business, actually. So I, so I basically moved out of it, you know, with the exception to some um, basic roles that a chairman would do, to, you know, to consult on. Um, yeah, but I ran that business for a long time. It was it was really profitable in, in the first... Uh, seven to 12 years. So it threw off a lot of money. I made some good investments with that. Um, you know, I've just, I've just been clever with the money that I've made. Um, one of the things that James Altucher talks about, you know, to kind of reference that is you have ideas and you have money and you kind of have to have these things get together and have idea sex and have money sex so that it can make more of it. And it's a skill that you have to get good at and you get good at it by just doing it and applying yourself at it. So most of the money has, has been made over time, but again, you know, it just kind of multiplies itself. Like you guys know exactly how it works. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those questions that doesn't really need answering. Um, now a mm. bunch of, a, a bunch of the questions, I'm actually going to basically dismiss this Q and a because what you need to do for a lot of these questions is check rich out on Twitter, rich underscore Cooper. If you don't have Twitter, get on it right now. Um, I'm obviously lives talisman uh, on Twitter. If you're watching this podcast, you probably know who I am already. Everything that you're asking is answered in the videos that Rich uh, puts out and the videos that I put out um, and the material that we produce. Um, but yeah, I just want to say you give uh, them the YouTube channel so they can find it. It's entrepreneurs yeah. in cars. One moment. Let me just, I'm going to post just go to link. the YouTube search bar. Just search for entrepreneurs in cars and you'll find it there. I'm going to post a link to Thanks. Rich's YouTube. And I want you all to check it out. Give me 10 seconds. Um, but yeah, every single question that you're asking him, I feel like it'd be very mundane and with not much point in. Uh, this is another video by someone else that you did. Here we go. Yeah, I think it would be very uh, a, a waste of time to um, answer these questions right now on my channel when all of the material that you could hope to find is on his YouTube channel right here. I've just posted three links in a row. Please check this out. Um, this is a super chat, five euros. Cool. But you're both alphas in your own way. Any advice to guys? Uh, is the, There's a lot of work in these areas. What should you prioritize in your 20s? What should people prioritize in their 20s? One question, because he paid for this question. So why don't you tell him? Don't get into a long-term relationship with a woman. Work yeah. on yourself. I say the same thing. Fall in love when you're already rich. Right now, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but all yeah. right, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been me and Rich Cooper. Check him out. Um, this is his Twitter. This is his uh, YouTube channel. It's all now in the feed. Um, a lot of the questions are uh, ask me privately. I'm not going to burn too much of Rich's time asking these questions because a lot of them are about Romanian showbiz and that's not very important and relevant as to what we're doing right now. But you know where to find me. You know where to check me out. Uh, information about the webcam business, information about uh, joining the war room or, or learning what I know about how to meet women is available on cobratate.com. You know where to find Rich. Check out the book. Thank you for joining us today. And um, yeah, peace out.